Hi guys and welcome to this 11th video in the But How Do It Know companion video series. Uh, in the last video we saw how to program the Arduino devices uh, that we're going to be using uh, pretty much throughout the project. Uh, if you've gone and programmed your main Arduino here uh, already and maybe you've been playing with it a little bit, it's possible that you saw it behaving maybe a little bit strangely, maybe you saw some of these LEDs turn on by themselves or if you have the serial monitor uh, turned on, maybe you saw some mes messages being printed in there. And the reason for this is that uh, the Arduino is programmed to use some of these pins uh, in the front here and the back as input pins. But we have not connected anything to those pins yet. So as we talked about in one of the first videos, these pins are floating and can send uh, random signals to uh, the device. So uh, today, as we construct the RAM for our uh, CPU, uh, we're going to be connecting those uh, input pins properly and uh, arranging them in a way that we can send uh, some signals to them and uh, use our RAM that's going to be simulated inside uh, this Arduino. So if we pull up the diagram on page 52 of the book, where uh, John illustrates the RAM for uh, his design. On the top left, you can see the MAR. So the MAR is a register that is used to store the current uh, working address in memory. Uh, so the idea is you set the MAR to a certain value and then using the set or enable signal from the RAM, you can read or write to that uh, memory location. So uh, the address stored inside the MAR is split up into two sets of four bits, each going into uh, two decoders. So we haven't looked at decoders yet, and we're going to be uh, doing that in just a few moments. So each decoder has 16 lines coming out of it, and at each intersection of these lines, uh, of this big grid, there is a register that is used to store uh, the value or the byte at that specific address, the address that is uh, in the MAR. So building obviously uh, a RAM circuit like this would be very big. You would need uh, 256 registers plus all the other gates uh, needed to uh, create the logic at each of uh, the grid locations. So that's why I decided to simulate it inside our uh, Arduino uh, for this project. So even if we're not going to be using decoders in um, this project directly, there's still a very useful circuit to know. So I'm going to take a few minutes here and we're going to be doing a little uh, side project and looking at them. Okay, so we have a diagram here for a 2x4 decoder that comes from John's book on page 48. So the idea behind the decoder is that it has a certain number of inputs, in this case 2, A and B. And for each combination of input values for A and B, there is an output value that represents uh, that combination. So in a way you view the inputs A and B as a code, right, as a binary code. And for each distinct value of your code, you can send a signal to the proper output uh, that corresponds to it. So uh, let's say you want to dispatch you know, uh, certain behaviors to different signals. You can create a code and then uh, using the decoder, you activate the proper part of uh, your, your uh, project, say, based on the good signal. So I've gone and built a 2x4 decoder here. So if we take a look at it quickly, our two inputs A and B will be these two um, push buttons here. This is A and this is B. So coming out of A is the A signal, which is this yellow wire here. It goes into a NOT gate that we've built here using uh, NAND uh, gates like before. Uh, and NOT A is this um, purple wire here. Then for the B side, it's going to go be happening on top. So B will be this uh, green uh, signal here going into a NOT gate. 
and not B will be this red one. And now each uh, pairs of these signals are sent to a different AND gate, one, two, three, four. Uh, that output to uh, these LEDs here. So this will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So let's turn it on. So we see that as soon as we turn it on, uh, the 0, 0 LED turns on. And that's normal because uh, both push buttons, since I'm not pressing on either of them, uh, are sending 0 to uh, the circuit. So in a decoder, there is always one and only one um, output signal that is turned on, depending on what are the inputs of A and B. So now if I go and press on B here, you can see that the second LED is now turning on because the signal we're sending is 0, 1, and it's being decoded into this LED right here. If I press A this time, now we have our third LED turning on because our code is 0, 1. And uh, ultimately, if we press on both at the same time, we have the fourth LED that turns on because our code is 1, 1. So decoders are uh, used in John's book in the RAM module and also in the ALU, but we're not going to be building them in the project directly because those modules are going to be implemented in um, software inside the Arduinos because they would be too, build, too big to build out of uh, our, our gates and registers. But it's an important uh, circuit uh, that's used in electronics, so uh, I thought it would be nice to take a look at it. So now we're going to go finish up our RAM and make sure it works properly. So we're going to be looking at this diagram here from page 54 which is going to be much more useful for us as it shows the, the RAM unit as basically a black box with only uh, its I.O. showing. So if we look at the image on the right, there is basically five uh, inputs or outputs to uh, the RAM unit. The first one is the address bus, which brings the address uh, to uh, the MAR. Under that, you have the MAR set uh, signal which saves the address into uh, the MAR register. Below that, a bus labeled IO, which is actually the data bus that's going to bring or retrieve data from RAM, and the set and enable uh, signals to uh, control whether you want to read uh, something from RAM using E or write using S. We will see uh, a little further along in the book that the A bus and the IO bus are actually the same thing. So ultimately, you will have your bus being connected to the RAM unit and three uh, distinct signals, set MAR, set RAM, and enable RAM. So since our uh, RAM is going to be simulated inside the Arduino, here is what the code looks like. This is a simplified version, but uh, it, it's really the, 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 uh, the essence of it. You have two variables, one that is the MAR, which is going to save uh, the address, and uh, an array of 256 bytes, which is called, in this case, RAM. And the way the Arduino works is you have a function to initialize your device, and then there is a loop that repeats uh, infinitely. So in this loop, there is only three things, uh, three blocks. The first one says, if the MAR set signal is on, read the data on the bus and put it in the MAR uh, variable. The second block says, if the RAM set signal is on, read data from the bus, put it in the RAM location that is pointed to or contained in MAR. And finally, the third little block says, if the RAM enable um, signal is on, write to the bus the contents of RAM at address MAR. And that's basically just it. So with this, we can simulate our uh, RAM uh, effectively. Now, if we look at our schematic more closely here, we already have our Arduino up and running. It's already connected to the bus. So what we need to add to it are these three signals. 
uh, namely mar s, ram e, and ram s. And this is how we're going to be wiring them. So they're going to use pins d4, d3, and d2 from the Arduino. And we're going to bring those down all the way uh, to the bottom. And we're going to hook a pull down register to each of them so that by default they have a zero or ground value. And it will enable us using a wire to inject one signals uh, when we want to and simulate our RAM uh, operating. You will also see a red wire coming from uh, the label, uh, the pin A3 and it's labeled HALT here in this diagram. We're not going to be using it right now, but since it is an input to this Arduino, we cannot leave it floating. Uh, so we will connect it in the same fashion uh, to the ground via a pull down register, a resistor, sorry, to make sure that um, it uh, is not floating. So I'm going to go uh, wire this up on the board and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've wired this up on our board on top of what was already there. And uh, in addition of uh, these three signals here uh, that we needed to add, I forgot to mention before, you also need to bring your power and your ground down to this last rail down here. So now that we have everything in place, we should be able to uh, do some testing and uh, play around a little bit with our RAM. So suppose that we want to uh, do two things, uh, place and store the value 15 in a memory location 1 and store the value 240 in a uh, memory location 2. So let's go and try to do this. So the first thing we need to do is set our first address on the bus. So I have set 1 here which is the address that we want to store our first number in and then we activate the mar s signal which is the first one here so that should have caused the value one to be stored into the mar byte inside the arduino now we will set our value which is 15 so 15 is nice it's four leads on here at the lower uh, end so now if we turn on the ram s signal it should have saved this value inside uh, memory location 1. And we can check to make sure if that's the case. We turn this off. And without doing anything else, since the value inside the MAR is still 1, if we enable the RAM E signal, we should see our value coming out. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Now for our second number, we set our address to activate the mar s signal set our value so 240 is uh, you know the contrary of 15 so it turns on these four leads here so let's save it inside location 2 so that should be saved We'll turn everything off here to have our bus uh, reset. And if we uh, enable what's there, we can see that the proper value is coming out. Now, if we wanted to retrieve, let's say, the first value that we set. So set our address to 1. There you go. Set the mar. So now we have 1 in the mar. And if we uh, ask our CPU to uh, tell us what is inside uh, address 1 by uh, enabling the RAM E signal, we can see our value 15 uh, being sent to the bus. So, so far so good. Everything seems to be working. So we're able to uh, store data to RAM and retrieve it. So this is going to be very useful later on. We'll be able to store some data for our programs, but most importantly, we'll be able to store the instructions for our program, which are going to allow us to create sequence of instructions and execute them on our CPU. So that's it for the RAM part. In the next video, we'll be looking at 
a few more uh, basic uh, gate combinations that we're going to be needing later on. See you soon!